All right, good morning, everybody. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, our research at SENSE, dealing with this uh, alter cancer cells. And a uh, good segue from the latter part of the previous talk. So what we're doing at SENSE to uncover the genetic basis of the uh, alternative lengthening of telomeres, or, or ALT mechanism. So, if you're going to do anything about the uh, diseases of aging, of course, cancer should be really high up, uh, high up there in our, in, in, at the top of the list of uh, things we have to deal with, because not just be, uh, in terms of incidence of cancer, but also mortality rates for cancer disproportionately affect the elderly population. But then how, do, how are cancers able to do that is to beat the, the cell growth limit or the Hayflick limit in terms of uh, uh, how telomeres are maintained. So the, in the previous talk, we had a very nice introduction about how telomeres work to, as, a, uh, as a capping function and how that limits proliferation. So when telomeres shorten, we have the senescence and the crisis and uh, cell death associated with it. But uh, cancers are very effective at uh, defeating that limit by evolving mechanisms to extend telomeres. So the cancers uh, uh, evolve mechanisms to defeat this uh, inherent limit in, in proliferation and evade the uh, uh, death by extending the telomeres. So how do they do that? Most cancers do this, of course, by uh, upregulating telomerase, which is uh, schematically depicted here, and just adding the uh, tag repeats, TTA, GGG, repeats at the end of the telomeres. And this is a very you know, well-established, uh, well-described pathway for telomere elongation. And uh, these are just a partial list of uh, telomerase-based uh, therapies that have come out from this type of research. But then what about the 10 to 15% of cancers that show uh, no detectable telomerase activity? So, of course, in this area, uh, much less is known, but we know we have several clues or several uh, peculiar characteristics of these uh, cells that seems to have this alternative method for lengthening telomeres that we call ALT. Uh, one of them is this, uh, the presence of these extra chromosomal telomeric circles they are believed to uh, have a role as, as a template for telomere elongation through homologous recombination. And it seems that these processes happen on these uh, uh, APB structures, which, are, which stand for alt associated PML nuclear bodies, PML being promyelocytic leukemia bodies, where these PML proteins uh, in alt cells and not normal cells or telomerase positive cells associate uh, closely with the telomeres and I believe to be sites of telomere uh, elongation by, by ALT. So it's now a mainstream proposition uh, for our universal anti-cancer therapy that we need to defeat not only the telomerase method for elongating telomeres, but also the ALT pathway. And there's uh, evidence showing that if you inhibit telomerase, the cells or the tumor cells, cancer cells, can just revert to an ALT mechanism. So in order to defeat both of these, uh, telomere lengthening uh, maintenance mechanism, we have to do a dual therapy that will consist of inhibiting the telomerase and the ALT pathway. However, uh, it's not known what gene or gene, a group of genes that are the main uh, responsible, uh, responsible for the ALT mediated uh, lengthening of telomeres. And this, gra uh, this uh, graph is just showing the number of publications per year. So if we track it from 87 to today, uh, the number of publications and what's known in the field, uh, cancer field about telomerase, uh, it's a lot more than what we know about the alt field. So very small percentage of the publications. Um, so very few groups are working on uh, alt, uh, alt research, and which makes it you know, very challenging to um, to, to make uh, uh, significant advancements in the field. But we believe that we can try to sort of bridge this gap by improving the, the assays for it. So the, the trap assay is the main assay for telomerase activity. And then for all specific activity, there's the APB assay and the C-circle assay, which I'm going to talk more detail in a little bit. But 
so I believe that in order to, you know, the, to accelerate research and discovery in, in the alt field, you need to uh, make, it, make improvements to these two assays. So one of the assays I mentioned is by looking for these APBs in the nucleus of these cells. So this is published data from the repair group showing uh, how they use 3D confocal image acquisition and analysis to uh, describe in detail the, the, the presence of these APBs in uh, alt positive cells, which are much more frequent than in, uh, in telomerase positive cells. Not only that, they show that the, there's uh, clustering of these telomeres and PML uh, nuclear bodies only when they are uh, in, the, in the context of APBs. So uh, there's sort of this clustering and enlargement of the spots uh, when they're in APBs versus in, in other cell locations. So we, we developed, uh, so applied existing technology um, uh, for uh, microscopy to make some improvements to the, to the original assay and make it much faster by instead of having to do 3D image acquisition and analysis, what we do is take the Z-stack uh, uh, of the cells and then uh, this is performed on the fly to deconvolve the images and come up with a best focus image in 2D that's fed into an autom automated image analysis algorithm. So we don't need to do any uh, uh, intricate confocal 3D image acquisition analysis that requires supercomputers in the original publication. So we can make this you know, a lot faster. And here's some data that we were able to replicate using the, the same alt cell line in the original uh, APB assay study, showing that we can replicate the data, uh, at least the key parameters in the data, not only in terms of the number of APBs per cell, but also the size shift in terms of the clustering of the telomeres at the PML when they're locating at it, uh, located at APBs. So I mentioned at the beginning that there's uh, this extra chromosomal telomeric repeats that are circular and they're uh, present, seem to be present only in alt cells. One of them are these C circles, which are, which are partially double-stranded with the intact circular strand being C-rich or CCCTAA uh, part. So then the, in the C circle assay, the, the way they are uh, able to detect this is by rolling circle amplification, so if you incubate these circles with uh, 529 DNA polymerase, you can essentially amplify the tag strand on the C circles many, many times and generate very long strands that can then be, that can then be blotted, uh, dot blotted, and then detected by this radioactive probe. And this is the, what the data looks like. So in alt cells, you see a very intense signal from, derived from these C circles and very, very little signal or background signal from the telomerase positive cells. And the response of the assay is very linear up to the 64 nanograms of genomic DNA range. And usually you only need about 20 to 40 nanograms of genomic DNA in order to perform this, this assay. So in our lab, we develop uh, an improvement to the assay by using non-radioactive probes, which show very similar sensitivity to the original C-circle assay, and this is some representative data here. So the, the, the shape of the curve, the response curve of the assay is very similar to the, to, to the original paper, and usually the authors in the paper used uh, you know, between 20 and 40 nanograms of genomic DNA to perform the, the assay, which, and we get a good response, good uh, signal-to-noise ratio, uh, showing um, high concentrations of these uh, C-circle intensity uh, or C-circle levels in alt cells versus tau cells. So, so the assay is functional and, and with a non-radioactive version. However, we wanted to make it better in terms of how we detect these C-circles by making, you know, a lot faster. So... Uh, instead of doing dot blot, we're trying to do an ELISA-based ELISA method of detection. But the problem with that is that the RCA products formed during this step generate these very long tag strands, which are usually greater than 70,000 bases. So then the, then the question was, okay, how can we actually break these strands in a manner that can be detected and compatible with uh, an ELISA-based format? 
So one approach that we tried was to label the strands uh, with the UTP and then use uracil DNA glycosylase or EDG to create a basic site. They're now amenable to cleavage by heat and alkaline pH. And these methods, of course, commonly used to uh, eliminate uh, contamination fragments in, during PCR. So just trying to adapt that to uh, create the strand cleavage for, for C circle assay purposes. So this is a schematic of how uh, the approach works. So we double label the strands with DISH for, for the later uh, ELISA based detection and the UTP for strand cleavage. So everything is happening at the same time in the, during the RCA, and of course UDG is introduced in, the, in that same uh, soup there. And then, we're, and then uh, by heat treatment and alkaline pH, create these smaller fragments that are now can be detected by these capture probes, and they're supposed to represent uh, the bottom of, uh, of a well in the like 96 well plate format. And then once you capture those strands, now it can uh, add the anti-dish peroxidase and substrate for the color change. And this is, this is how the wells look like. So these are not blot images, but actually, actually the wells we see with the 96 well plate format. And we see that when we added the, the UTP to the mix, we, we caused great increase in signal in this alt cell line, E2OS. C96 are just artificial C circles. There's a positive control. And when we test uh, a telomerase uh, sample with 143B cells versus an alt sample, we see a great increase in signal, which tells us that the, the ELISA assay is functional, but not sensitive, still not as sensitive as the original C-circle assay by the Riddell group. So then the, the idea here is to, in order to accelerate alt-based research and discovery, uh, we want to be able to uh, look at this uh, database of gene expression that uh, identify genes that are upregulated in alt cells versus tel cells and do RNAi screens using the assays that we had developed to identify gene targets. On the other, way, on the other hand, you can also use the genes that are upregulated in tel versus alt cells and then do the same thing here to identify more gene targets and then validate these genes both in vitro and, and in vivo and have this validate all gene targets for further development. And also, of course, these assays could also be used for high throughput screening of uh, drug and you know, small molecules for, for these uh, cancer, cancer cells. So in summary, the, we have developed this 2D high content a, a version of the APB assay that's, uh, that can be much faster than the original 3D based APB assay. We also have made improvements to the C circle assay by making non-radioactive and more ELISA-based uh, and, and high-content friendly format, but of course you still have to work on the uh, sensitivity because, uh, and make it work in the 20 to 40 nanogram range that, that the original assay uses. Right now we can do it, but we need the, the maximum amount of, of genomic DNA used in the original paper. So now I'd like to bring uh, the David uh, Halverson to talk about the specific genes they're looking at to, and, and determine their role in the ALT pathway. So as Geraldo described, one of the main challenges with the ALT field is the limited amount of prior work that's been done, which is why one of the prongs of our approach is developing high throughput methods of screening for this activity. There is some prior work, and another aspect of our project is actually hypothesis-driven gene screening for the work. So, this is a, a model of how alt activity develops in, in, in cells at the top, a, a very common theme that you've probably all seen before, uh, uh, repetitive tag sequences of telomere, telomere ending, with the sheltering complex tightly binding it and protecting it from being recognized as a double strand break. So a sheltering complex is there. The odd thing about the alt field, and there isn't a very good model for this yet, is there's actually copying of subtelomeric regions of DNA into the telomere that actually prevents the sheltering complex from binding efficiently to the telomere, opening it up to being uh, seen as a, a DNA a damage response, which allows the homologous recombination that's proposed to be the telomere synthesis involved in the alt pathway to act upon it. 
So one of the genes we're looking at is uh, protection of telomeres one, which is involved in protecting the very end of the telomere, the 200 base pair, 200 nucleotide long tag sequence. And that is one of the primary parts of the sheltering complex believed to inhibit the DNA damage response. And we're very interested in this in terms of ALT because of published work in both C. elegans and mice that deletions and knockdowns of, of the homolog of this protein actually induce features of the ALT assay. So that led us to wonder if knocking down POT1 at all would increase ALT activity in telomerase positive cells. So we've done that. About half of the wild type POT1 has been reduced in using this high throughput APB assay that Geraldo described before. We report that there is little to no difference at all between the 143 telomerase positive wild type and the POT1 siRNA as far as APB co-localizations. Also looking at two different uh, experimental knockdowns of, of POT1 over several passages, we see no increase in the C-circle assay from wild type to these passages here in comparison to the alt-positive cells. So no change is seen with that particular work. Another gene that we're looking at is the ATRX gene. It's involved in DNA in general at depositing the histone H3.3 to DNA. Its role at telomeres isn't widely known, but what interested us about it in, in terms of ATRX is its almost complete functional absence in, in alt cells. So there's actually a model proposed here that its absence is actually inducing fork stalling because of the G quadruplex cannot be uh, efficiently replicated without its presence and actually is inducing homologous recombination that is increasing the amount of alt activity. So that led us to question what would happen if we were to force overexpression of ATRX in an alt positive cell line. So we have generated stable cell lines of uh, GFP fusion plasmid with ATRX overexpression. And we report very preliminary data that forced overexpression of ATRX sufficiently decreases the C-circle response. This was done on Friday. So I don't have APB assay for you yet. We're actually trying to, to get that for the poster session, which you might be able to see in two days. So in summary, the 143B telomerase positive cell line, when uh, SIPOT1 is used, we don't see a sufficient change in alt activity all, and we're wondering if knocking out, knocking down TERT as well would uh, select for cells, or for cells to pick up the all mechanism once they senesce, and also will overexpression of POT1 in all cells uh, uh, protect the telomeres from that response of the, the DNA damage response. Also, very interestingly, ATRX seems to reduce the C circle levels in all activity, but we're wondering what the response is on APBs and we're also wondering if telomere lengths decrease in these cells. I'd like to mention that the majority of these projects were started by Thomas Hunt and Navneet Ramesh. If you guys could raise your hands. They both have posters that they're going to be talking about tonight. And we're going to try and have that APB data by tomorrow night for Navneet to present. So it's a work in progress. But we're very excited about this ATRX result. I'll lead it over Thank to you, Dave. Um, so just an overall uh, summary in future directions. Uh, so we'd like to start those uh, RNAi screens on all gene candidates, which is both the high content assays, the APB assay and the C-circle assay that I described. And like Dave mentioned, we also want to keep, uh, you know, do further analysis, more experiments on these ATRX and POT1 uh, uh, cells, and investigate more of the role uh, on the ALT mechanism for cancer immortalization. And and then also continue this sort of uh, small-scale hypothesis-driven approach with other alt-associated genes that we, we didn't mention. And these are the people I'd like to acknowledge uh, for their contribution to the work. So yeah, thanks for your attention, and I'll be happy to, happy to answer any questions.